Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they don't have separate wills. Yeah, they don't. They have, they don't have they're one identical will. in wills. Identical wills. No separate wills. No separate power. No. They have one will, uh, one power. Okay, yeah. no problem. Well, can you explain to me what the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Son, the Holy Spirit is? I don't really understand the question. Quickly You're going this. back and forth with them for a long time. They're not getting it. Let me so, answer so, the question. So go ahead, please. Yes. All right, cool. My name's Esra. Nice to meet you. You cool. too, my friend. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Cool. You're asking, you said that the Trinity okay. is unreasonable. You, 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 I'm sorry, you're going to debate him. All I'm going to ask you, five seconds, please will you join our channel on Wednesday night to debate Mecca in the 7th century? I don't think I have got time for that. Moment. Okay. Is okay. it possible to have a debate with you about Mecca in the 7th century? Potentially, I'm here to talk about anything you guys want, but let's just do one thing at a time. Okay. Let's yeah. do one he's, thing at a time. He's hijacked his conversation. Okay. Well, let's just do one thing at a time. But we'll come back to, I'll come back to you. But let the brother, let the brother also go. Yeah. Okay. All right. He's, yeah. He's My name is S.Y. Critical Thomas. Okay. I'm a Thomist. I'm a, uh, I study uh, Thomas Aquinas. Oh, fantastic. Now, you said that the Trinity would be irrational. I didn't to, say that. To I, I didn't infer say it from, rash, from natural reason. No, I, I, I didn't That's say it would be irrational. No, I, all I said was this. At this point, we're doing just one thought experiment. Yeah. Of course, I believe the Trinity is irrational. We can talk about that. That's what I think. But okay. in, for the okay, purpose, so of, no, but for the purpose, the Trinity without the Bible. Yeah, I'm saying yeah, for the pur yeah. for the purposes of this discussion today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all we're doing is as follows. Yeah. We're saying remove all cultural references, yeah. all historical references, all religious references, mm. all scriptures. You have the Quran, the Bible, all of this. You have the ca the councils, all of those. Delete them. Delete mm. it. Yes. All you have now mm. is three things. You have rationality. Mm -hmm. You have uh, your, senses, your five senses and, and you have intuition. Yeah. I'm saying the onus is on you now yeah. to show me how the Trinity is true based on these three things, nothing else. Yeah. So can you do that? Okay. As a Christian, yeah, especially please. as a Reformed Catholic, yeah. we are not allowed to reason our way to the Trinity. We can reason to God, but not the Trinity. But I can explain to you through reason why, you're not why the Trinity would be metaphysically necessary. What? But why are you not allowed to do that? We're not allowed to do that because it's a heresy called Pelagianism. Sure, you cannot reason your way to the divine he, sacramental he, secrets. I understand what I'm saying. But I can't, I can't explain he, his, the reason uh, why what's your name again, brother? Critical Thomas. Critical. Uh, cr critical, what I was going to say to you is this. My claim is this. Mm. If you ask me, yep. prove Allah. I say of Allah can be proven on a rational level, bottom up. Mm. Okay? Can be proven on a rational level. It can even be in, you can even say there's instinct of it, there's evidence of instinct. And you guys know about the study, you know, uh, J J Justin Barrett and so on, and the 32,000 people. The when you're ready. Yeah, yeah, sure. On your terms. Sure, sure, sure. No, but what I'm saying is that there's evidence that we're born with an, in an in uh, ingrained, intuitive idea that God exists. Yep, I agree. There's no evidence that we're born believing Jesus is God, that the Son is God, that the Holy Spirit is God. Yep. No one, no one who has not been socialized into it, yes, would say, okay, Jesus is God, do you see? And likewise, no one would say Muhammad is a prophet. I, I agree, I, I agree with that. Yeah. What I'm saying is that the basic idea of God, yeah. yes, the, yeah. the basic idea of God, yeah. we can say intuitively, we have mm. evidence that you can get to that yeah. without any scripture. Rationally, mm. you have all the arguments for God's existence, as you know, yeah. which bring us to the necessary being, yeah. the independent one, mm. which is the basic idea of God. Yeah. We don't need scripture to prove yeah. Allah. Yeah. What I'm saying is, can you do the same thing with the basic idea of the Trinity? Yeah, we don't need scripture to prove Yahweh, since the nominal name, the Allah, Yahweh, cannot be deciphered without scripture. So here's the thing, according to your position. I can reason to the Trinity and show how the Trinity is metaphysically necessary. And I will discuss that with you. I'm saying that as a Christian, I'm taking this risk because I don't believe I'm allowed to because it's a heresy. You're not supposed to reason your way through sacramental secrets of the faith. You're not supposed to do that. Now, okay. but I will reason Can you do it? I can do it. Okay, so can you do it? Then? When you re we both agree, we both agree on the common supposition that God is necessary. Sure. And I believe that God is divinely simplistically necessary. I don't know what you believe in yet. No, I don't believe that. Hey, cool. I believe that God is divinely simplis uh, simplistically necessary. Now, because we have intelligible operations that we do, like I'm speaking to you, right? That's me using my speech. I'm looking at you, that's me using my eyes. My intelligible operations are produced for my senses because without my senses, I would not be able to know anything. These are really distinct from who I am. Because if I did not have the ability to speak, I would still be critical Thomas. Now, these intelligible operations don't produce anything in me because they're not intrinsically identical to who I am. 
But because God is divinely simple, his intelligible operations, the act of him knowing himself and the act of him loving himself, okay. it, don't cut me off please, is intrinsic and necessary to him knowing who he is. So God, the Father, try, and when I say try, I'm not talking about like in a metaphysical sense, just talking about in a logical sense. He tries to know himself. When he tries to know himself, the object that is known is him, which is the Son. The Father and the Son then love themselves, which is produced from the act of the willing. The act of the will produces a relation, which is the Holy Spirit. We call it the Holy Spirit because that's what's given to us in Scripture. Although, it's still three objects nonetheless. Now, these three relations are necessarily real, really distinct because that means really different. Because when you have a real relation, it's obviously really distinct. You can never have a real relation that's only conceptually distinct. So, they're necessarily really distinct, they're really different but they still exist in the same essence, the same nature, the same substance. And this is going to be necessary because the intelligible operations is identical to its essence. If it's not necessary, you're going to have to say that Allah, or whatever God it is, only contingently began to love. That he never actually loved himself, or he never actually knew himself before he produced the world, and then he started to know the world and love the world. That's contingency. Allah has, God, whoever he, whatever you want to call him, He's always existed and he's always known himself and he's always loved himself. And that necessarily produces relations because he cannot know himself. I cannot know you without you existing, right? I need to know you, right? And the object of you. I need to have the object of you before I know you. So the father who's trying to know his infinite essence, just logically speaking. Through the son. Is now, he now produces a relation to an object that is known. That is the son. That's why we call the son the word of God. Comes the wisdom okay, of God. So you, and then sure. produce the there's, Holy Spirit. There's a few things that you've mentioned. You can though. metaphysically right. uh, reduce that right. to reason. So you've got three, yeah. right? Well, uh, I've got two questions because you yeah. mentioned you mentioned love, right? Yeah. You mentioned the Father loving the Son, the Son loving the Holy Spirit. No, the Father and the Son willingly love the Holy Spirit. Sure. Which proceeds from Father. The, okay, uh, sure. The okay, no problem. Uh, love as an attribute of God. Love as an attribute of the necessary being. Yeah. Uh, How do you prove that from first principles? Love? Yeah. Okay, first principle. The only first principle in the Aristotelian sense is the principle of non-contradiction. So I don't... That, that simply doesn't make sense. But you prove that you from, can, a, from a bottom up... You can reason no, no, that no, no, God no, loves no, no, because... No, no, no. Okay. Um, maybe you've misunderstood my question. So, when you're... As you may be aware, because you're interested in Thomas Aquinas, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's five ways of mm. proving God's existence mm. in the Soma Theologica, right? And, and what he was doing in those in that exercise was showing how God exists. Mm. Would you agree, right? Five different ways of showing God exists. Yeah, five ways. Sure? All right. So when I say bottom up or first principles, I'm talking about the methods. You talk about the axioms? I'm talking about the methods. I'm being clear about what I mean by it. Which, the like of which Aquinas used in proving God's existence in the first place. The methods, yeah, like so, the Aristotelian let me let, let me explain what I mean by this, because you're a Thomist. Yeah. So, Thomas Aquinas, he had five arguments for God's existence. Mm. None of those arguments for God's existence that he had mm. led to a triune God. None of them. Would you agree with that? Aquinas did not want, I'm telling you, I'm not supposed to try to reason my way to the yeah. Trinity. I'm not allowed to, to heresy. No, no, but it's Pelagianism. No, 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 but, but, but yeah, but I did, you I did, I did, because I told you, yeah. and everyone that's watching the video knows, okay. I told you okay. that I am not supposed to, and I'm not allowed to. Aquinas acknowledged this. He even wrote this in Article 28 on the So why is he doing five uh, arguments? Article 28 on the, okay. Article, Article 28 in but, Aquinas yeah, Summa sure. Theologica, Question three to question five, yeah. he actually realizes that you can actually reduce God having three necessary real relations. But he doesn't want to prove God that way. Okay. He says that you proving God alone is sufficient. Okay. You proving but, God through the Trinity, through sorry, natural sorry, reason, sorry, can you come back? is a heresy. We're not allowed to do that. Okay, uh, brother you, cannot, you, can have to come, you have to come to that conclusion right, through the sacramental means of sure. efficacious grace, oh, which is God. Sure, sure. So I'm not supposed to do that to you. Oh, sure, sure. But I'm only doing that to you because you said that the Trinity is irrational. But okay. How okay, do you mind if I go back to the thought experiment? Because I think he's, we might have forgotten the thought experiment. Let me just start again. Yeah. So, we started off by saying, if you remove all scriptures, if you remember what I said, all religious teachings, all narratives, all cultures, you have in your disposal rationality, you have intuition, and you have your five senses, okay? Yep. Now I'm saying, prove 
the triune, the basic. So, so, so you said, please. Did uh, he not like hear what excuse, I said, excuse me, brother. Yeah. If you show me disrespect, I will turn my back on you. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand this point? You're showing me okay. disrespect because so, you're so, not interpreting so, so what I'm saying. I've, I have listened to you very quietly. Okay, so did you. Do, listen. Can you repeat what listen, I said? Excuse me. Don't do that again. Do you understand? What you're just going to turn no, your back. Excuse me. Don't do that again. So here. So I'm going to go back to the question. We, I'm asking you to prove the Trinity, yes, yes. from first principles using those three things that I've just mentioned. You started what talking about love. You're talking about intuition and the uh, yeah, 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 other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, you started talking about love relations. I said, how do you prove the attribute of love yes. without scripture now, without yeah, any yeah, statement? Yeah. Yeah. Can so, you do? Can you so go back good? to that? Now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God is pure being. We know this from reason. We know two things from reason, and we know two things from experience, because you said about experience. Cool. We know that there's a distinct, or there's a difference between infinite being and finite being. We're all finite being because we can change. God has to be infinite by negation. God is infinite being. Goodness and being are convertible. Convertible means you can literally entertain the two. When you have goodness, you have being. When you have being, you have goodness. Because goodness is something where you cannot find a lack in. Okay. So, in pure being, God is perfectly good. But ontologically, what how love, does ontologically, ontologically, yeah, ontology, yeah, because ontolo you're saying goodness is a moral. Uh, no, no, no. He's, 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 he's trying to say that goodness and being have yeah. a biconditional relationship. Yeah, but I'm saying but it's, it's not, ontologically. By the way, that, sorry to say, yeah. I, I, I that's don't want ontology. All right. that's just, yeah, that's just I'm not, I'm bro, bro, to brother. With all due respect, he has a right to ask that question because. This, I have not really read anything, even from Aquinas. Maybe you can educate me. I'm just it. like this because no. you said the Trinity is irrational. Okay. You said my God is irrational. Okay, okay. 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 Hold your respect. We can have Let's, we you know, the difference of opinion, standard communication. Yeah. Can, I'm not going to interrupt. I, uh, what I'm saying oh, to you, what I'm saying to you is this. The reason is irrational. irrational. What, the, the question is this. Yeah. I want you all, I if you, if what I actually said, I didn't even say that. I said to you, if you remove all the scriptures, mm. the thought experiment we're doing at the moment is this. Yeah. Prove the Trinity mm. without any reference, mm. okay, so, mm. to anything religious. Mm. Just prove it from Aquinas bottom up the uh, in the same way, yeah. put it this way, yeah. as Thomas Aquinas proves yeah. the existence of God. Now, can you now, using his five methods, which I agree with them, with yeah, for the, for the most part, I like them, they're good. I can't, if you agree with so them, you'd be a divine simplicity. No, I mean, uh, that's a different question. But divine simplicity is a different question. We can talk about that if you want. But that's about the, the, the godly attributes now. We're talking about godly attributes. Okay, no so we're talking about, Let's stick on the Because yeah, yeah. now we're going to jump from pillar to post. Oh, yeah. You know, there are Muslim thinkers who did believe in that. Ibn Rushd, but Ibn Rushd, right? Did I mean, believe it, believed in that. Okay, the more Tesalis believe in a kind of divine simplicity. Uh, mm. But I don't believe. Mm. Okay. Like Ramon Yul and Ramon but uh, Yul. anyway, the, the point okay. I'm making to you is this: is that, that from these principles being accepted, how can you prove the Trinity? Yeah. The Trinity in the same way as Aquinas proves God. Absent from the yeah. Revelation. Okay. Do that? So I okay. I've already done that, and you asked no, but me I, about I the. Because you were talking. One of the things that you said is that you said that well, this love relationship between the Father and the Son. And I was trying to prove why God is loving, right? Yeah, so, so how'd you do that? Okay, I was gonna get well. to that yeah. and then you threatened me and you said what well, you wanted to say again. So okay, so I'm gonna tell you again. Goodness and being are convertible because yeah, in how'd you prove that? that? Yeah, okay. Because in goodness no is something or where lack or imperfection cannot be found. So but I can being say is the purely perfect because you cannot find the lack of imperfection in being. Because if you find the lack of perfection in being, then being is not being. Perfection is in being. Perfection is intrinsic to being. I'm gonna give you an example. Perfection is at. So I'm gonna give you an example. You ask me too many uh, questions, I don't want to go. go. Uh, okay, being an he's a man, yeah. he would not be good man, Christian. He can see me, that anger he's a human being. If I remove your eyes, right. that's so you're going to be blind, right? Sure. That's a negation of your being. I've subtracted something of who you are. Sure, sure, sure. If I remove because your eyes, you you're blind. Nobody wants to be blind. Sure. That's bad. Sure. So, goodness is inherent in your being. You're good as you are. If I remove your eyes, if I negate that being, it's going to be bad, right? Critical. So, are you talking about goodness? Because I didn't ask about goodness. I asked yeah, about love. Yeah, so th that's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay, cool. So now I have proved that goodness and being are no, convertible just general, terms, right? Like when you have goodness, uh, yeah. No hold on. When you have goodness, you have being. When you have pure now, being, you have pure goodness. That, um, now, wisdom. love defined by Aquinas is winning the absolute God, good. Why would that mean that? Now? Okay. So if God is How pure you, goodness uh, so hold on, hold on. and God hold necessarily hold on, has a will, He's willing the good. Bro, you're jumping too much. With all due respect, I understand the theology. 
And by the way, I don't disagree with what you said from a theological perspective. Do you understand? Like if, if you said, do I believe that God is loving? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Do I believe you can make a rational case for it? Yeah, I do. But I don't think that that case would be strong. If I'm honest with you, right? It's not a kind of... I think it's pretty strong. I, I, you can believe it. I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, no, hold on, hold on. But just let me... Brother, please, please. Do me a favor. In regards to... I agree with that, by the way. There are some attributes of God's we believe as a Muslim, like, you know, God is um, all merciful, all loving and stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and prove that to somebody. Why? That's what Me too. Do you see? Because I perfectly at, that, at that point, I'm saying at that point, you do need a revelation. Exactly. That's at that point, you... Okay, but you can't, you can't do it with you rational, see? but we just prefer to... Be no, no, no. Divine revelation that, is the best way. Sure, sure. That's I'm saying at that point, yeah. but I'm saying the basic theology of Christianity is that there's a Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three, there's three necessary persons in the, in the being of God. Now I'm saying that that itself requires justification. So can you rationalize this? That's all I'm asking. Yeah, and I've Go literally ahead. explained to you yeah. that you can rationalize it. And you okay, said, so you said love. Even said, so, so we're on, this, on the point of love. You said that you can, wait, hold on, please yeah, don't interrupt sure, me. Sure. You even said that I have been able to rationally conclude this, but you wouldn't want to do that to someone based on God because obviously the brand revelation is necessary and I believe that a hundred percent I will never literally go to someone and say I'm going to prove the Trinity to you rational reasons God forbid I'd rather go to hell okay. but you can rationalize it's not completely irrational okay fine fine yeah sorry I could rational the Trinity from my yeah. own perception without um, disregarding what he is. Yes, okay. so it's not so, like an so irrational so belief, right? When you would, when anyone wants to hear, what are you saying without Bible? Yeah, yeah, without, yeah, yeah. We're, we're so, on the concept yeah. you, you give. So the point yeah. is, this, you know, so, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get it bit by bit. By bit. So we're at a point of three. Yep. So what makes three necessary, not four or two? Okay. Now you're asking a better question. Okay. Now the reason why the three relations are necessary is because intelligible operations are only two in number intellect and the will that's literally the meaning of the that's literally the meaning of the mind right i need to know something i need to want something that's the intellect and the will sorry, there's no sorry. other intelligible sorry, sorry, no, operation uh, right sorry sir. it's only the intellect sorry, and the will thank you for saying i've asked a very good question yeah but i have to sadly say that i don't think you provided a very good answer because oh no but no without being disrespectful but yeah i'm saying that the the, the christian concept why was I provided a good answer? You're saying the Christian concept, what? we're not talking about religion, we're no. talking about metaphysics. No, but no, no, we're talking about the Trinity, right? Remember, yeah. we talked about Trinity. So I'm saying that the, the, the triune... We're doing it outside of religion, we're yeah, doing sure, sure. metaphysics. Yeah, sure. Sorry, Jack, we're talking to Unitarian. Just let me finish the, this, this point and then, sorry about that, and then we'll come back. Just on the point of the Trinity, right? You have three persons. What you mentioned is that you've got two relations. The persons are relations. No, 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 hold on. You've got three centers of consciousness, okay? Now, no, we don't have. You do, do you have. Mean? You do have three. You've got three, three different it. wills. Got no, three we don't. Okay, there's a father no, and a will. No, we don't. So, okay. And I've seen you make that the, argument on the, TikTok every time. Why, does, why do you will? think that? Does the father have a will? The father has a will. Sure. Does the son have a will? The son has the same will oh, as no, the father. No, no, no. Does, does the son have a will? The son has the same will as the father. So he doesn't have his own will. The son has the same will as the father. It's a unification. So, so hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, the, the, the will of the father is communicated to the will of the son as the same will. It's the same will as in it's like a piece of cake and it's divided into two, three parts. It's not divided. There's no division. You believe. I don't, don't want to be deceptive because you said things right. I think you're the one that believes in the division. If you believe in a divinely composed God, composition is division. Okay, that's another issue. We can come to it if you like. Okay. But I'm saying that you're saying that the, the will of God is the same. Now this word the same can me, be made in two different ways. Okay. For example, I have a phone in my pocket, yes? And you have the same phone, okay? So it could be that you have an identical phone. But it's, it's not identical. It's not identical. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get clarification from you. I'm trying to get clarification. So let me ask the, the, the two phones are not identical, so I don't I, know what I, you mean. I know. But let me just ask the question. Yeah. The question is, is when you say the same, when you're saying it's the same, are we saying it's like one piece of cake that's divided into three? Like no. The will of God. Wait, so what are we saying when you say the same? What do you mean? Okay. Yeah. Cool. A substance yeah. is an independent nature. You're a substance. You can stand there without him needing you. Okay. You're a substance. You can stand there without you needing him. So God is a substance. A God substance, is a substance. Yes, God is a substance. Substratum. <laughs> what? God can, so it's God is like he could put him under a microscope. Oh my gosh. Now what do you mean by substance? A substance is just an independent nature, bro. 
We're talking about metaphysics, not talking about physics. In physics, you can say a substance is like. Uh, trying to no, name, but no, you know what I'm saying? I don't understand. Substance, yeah, chemistry, you can say a, no, a substance. A is, a, is a material form. That's what substance means. Mm, well, we disagree. Thomas, I thought you read Aquinas. You know Aquinas disagrees with that, right? Oh, no, no. It's, the word substance, Aristotle that's what the word substance well. means. You, talk, you talked about Aristotle's metaphysics, so you don't know that substance. Okay, no, just about when you're talking about substance, okay, yeah. the word substance means something material form. So, no, okay. it does not. Okay, yes, it does. But it no, does go, not. Okay. Check the dictionary, do your own thing. Aristotle, you literally no. spoke about Aristotle's okay. chapter 6 about metaphysics. Uh, please, Aristotle in chapter 1 okay. explains okay. a substance. No problem. A substance is an independent okay. ontological item. Okay. That's sure. what substance is. Okay. Right? No, so you can have let's, angels. Let's, angels so are substances because they exist less, independently. Less fine. So For that's the sake false. of argument, let's use the yeah. term independent ontological item. Yeah. Okay. Is the will of God an uh, independent ontological item to the will of the Son? No. Okay. okay. Why? Okay. Why? Excellent. Because okay. the intellect and the will are what okay. attributes. Okay, beautiful. Right? Because beautiful. you're a human being because you have an intellect and a will. That's what makes you different from a pig over there. Okay, right? sure. Because you have sure. an intellect and a will. Pigs don't have an intellect and a will. So there's something in the nature so of a pig. It, so wait, one, sorry, so one let, me explain, let me answer you. Yeah. There's something in the nature look of a pig. at me pig. here. I'm here, by the way. Yeah, I'm trying to. He's also interested, and I like teaching my fellow Christians in sure, Christ. Sure. He, there's something different in the nature of a pig and the nature of you that makes you a human being and makes the pig a pig. You have the intellect and the will. Those are attributes of your nature. If the father has the same nature as the son, then they have the same intellect and the will. That's the point. Okay, my, my so they don't have a different you're, will you're not, and, you're not answering and my question. intellect. Is the will of the father, is it independent from the will of the son? No. no. Okay, so then when we talk about the will and you're saying that they're separate in some sense what in what sense is it, are they separate they're not separate at all, at all. there's so, no separations in god oh okay beautiful excellent yes. so, so there's only one will yes okay so you believe in modalism no what are you laughing at how do i believe in modalism yeah, you believe in modalism. do you know what modalism is what's you modalism it. you tell me ah you, you said me. I believe in modalism. You tell no, me. No, I'm asking you. What do you what do you, you believe understand? the earth is flat? Do you know what the earth flat means? No, no. no what, you tell what me. What is modalism? What is modalism? You tell me. What's, what's modalism? What's modalism? What's tritheism? Tell me. Oh my gosh. So, Try, okay. So, what is modalism? Oh my gosh. Okay. What is modalism? Modalism yeah. is saying that the relations in God are only virtually distinct. Okay. That's what modalism. Okay. Is. No, but hold on. Mo what what distinguishes modalism from tritheism? Tritheism is saying that the relations are really major, di majorly distinct. Oh, okay. So what are you saying? I mean, uh, tritheism is saying that the three persons are beings, independ independent beings. Sure, sure. So we'll go, we'll go to modalism again. What are you saying and what's modalism saying? So I am saying that the will is one because the will is an attribute of the nature which they all share. Okay, you're so saying I'm a modalist. No, no, hold on. Explain that to me. Explain to me why your view is not modalistic. Oh my gosh. Because modalism is saying that the relations are only virtual. I'm saying that they're real relations. No. What I mean by modalist. I don't think you understand what the no, Trinity no, no. is. No, no, no. Please, I mean, it's, this, this is not going to work. Because you said I saw the three centers of consciousness. Okay. You don't, you, don't, you don't believe in three centers of consciousness. You don't believe in no three independent worlds. No true Christian believes that. No, no, that's not true. That's true. That's not true. That is true. That's, okay, we'll come that to, is true. We'll come to a second. Council of Nicaea, no true Christian believes that. Council of Nicaea doesn't speak about this. Yeah. Council, what's the Trinity? Well, come, please, uh, go, you're going from pillar to post. The Trinity you're is going not from centers of consciousness. Right. Critical, so critical, the critical Trinity, please think. If there's one will, if there's one will, yeah, one will, which is an one, attribute of the nature. Okay, so it's one will. Explain this to me a little bit. There's one will. Yeah, there's one will. So, okay, one will. Yeah. How do you separate between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Oh my gosh. They're not separated. No. Are They're only anyway, really distinct. In, no. If they were separate, then there would no, be three my, different my question beings. is. We'd be polytheists. My question is. We're not polytheists, so they're not separate. Brother, please. Brother. That's what I'm telling you. Is there you. any separation between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? There's no separation. Oh, so it's one God? It's one God, yeah. Ah, so what, when we say Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, what do we mean by that then? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, yeah. real distinctions don't necessarily entail separations. Fazer writes this in page 206 in Introduction to Scholastic, uh, Scholastic, uh, Scholastic Philosophy. Okay. So he says that real distinctions don't necessarily entail separations. Okay, That's so why you guys get so, so, confused no, all sure, the time. Sure. Let, let me finish, let me finish, sure, sure, let me finish, sure, please. Sure. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are really distinct because they have a real relation between each other, okay? But they're what not relations? separate, they're not separate. They're so, all one being. 
They all one exist being. in one nature. Yeah, They're I'm not sure, separate. Sure. But if they were separate, so, so can you ask me, then can... there would be three different beings. No, 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 no. Do you understand okay. what I'm saying? Are there three different Christians persons? Do are they three, three different are beings? Are they three different persons or not? They're three different persons okay. because of the relation. Can I, can I ask you a question? What's a person? No, no. Just let me ask you a question. Think, you think, honestly, please, you brother, think please that stop the well. Stop poisoning the well. Sir? Stop poisoning the well. The well. Poisoning oh. the well. So Am I poisoning trying to the well? Pre trying to predict what I'm going to say before I say it. No, you said no. You literally said okay. that the persons are. Uh, you, I believe yes, in I three centers. I'm of asking one. questions. I'm asking questions. You said that the will is one. Correct. Yeah, the will is one. Yeah. Okay. Now, if the will is one, yeah, is the power one as well? The power is one. Yeah. In no, the, no. Is the power one or not? The power is infinite. So I mean, I guess it's one. Yeah. Yes, the power is one. The knowledge is one. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, does the father Hold know on. that he's the son? Does the son know that he's the father no. or something like that? No, no, no. We're, 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 we're in agreement now. This is exactly what I wanted. Why did he say that I believe in three centers of consciousness? He doesn't, be, he doesn't believe in three centers of consciousness. He said it himself. He said he does not believe in three centers of consciousness. Correct? Yeah, I don't. I don't. He doesn't believe in that. I don't. This is all I'm... I'm very happy with your answers. Okay. Go yeah, on. why? Because, look, honestly, I am. Yeah, go Because on. he said that... I don't believe in three centers of consciousness. He said that, right? Yeah, I don't believe in three centers of consciousness. He, he said that the wills are not distinct. That's what he said, right? Yeah, there's no distinct. There's no he real distinction of the wills. The will yeah. is an attribute. He said that the will of the Father is not distinct from the will of the Son, which is not distinct from the will of the Holy Spirit. They correct? all have the I same mean, will. There's no distinction. That's what he, that's, that's what you said, right? Yeah, they all have the same oh, will. Oh, beautiful. You said that there's no distinction in power. So the Father doesn't have power that the Son doesn't have, right? The father does not have power, the uh -huh. does not have power. You said that, right? Yeah. Okay, so in every single sense, mm -hmm. there's only one God, correct? Apart from the relations. Okay, hold on. Yeah. So you believe in a God which has the same will, the same power, no... Now we'll go to the persons that you like to talk about. This is the last thing and then that's it. That's it. He's going to come to our side. Because I think critical is becoming critical. Bro, this guy always I... boasts this. I like your boasting though, I like it, I like it. Go on. Okay, I'm not boasting. I'm gonna talk, I will never come to Islam. I, okay, I, you don't know. Ever. You don't know. Ever. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. I was a Muslim before. I was not a Muslim, but I was looking into it. You were a Muslim before? Uh, Can you recite Surah Al-Fatiha? What was the point? What was the point, man? Recite Surah Al-Fatiha. I said I was not a Muslim, I was considering it. So why did you say I was a Muslim before? Yeah, I changed my sentence. Oh, you okay, know, fine. You can correct yourself. Okay, no problem. I'm sure. I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm able to correct right. myself. I know, no problem. Now, the, the relations. What are, What is relating with what? What is relating with what? What do you mean? If it's not one will relating with another will, one power relating with another power, my question to you is what is relating with what? Yeah, okay. Yeah. The production of the intelligible operations produces a procession. But hold on, excuse me. The procession oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. is what causes hold on. the Critical, relation. critical. Yeah. <laughs> critical. Mm. The production is not uh, independent with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If the production yeah. is, if the production is unitary, so there is no idea of relations that are produced independently from Father, Son, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh, there's no independence. Do you understand this? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. The independence. So go ahead. The go independence ahead. is not indexed to the. I'm not starting again. I'm literally explaining the same thing. The independent. I'm explaining something What's that the you don't understand. What is the relation? The relations is how they're related to each other by the intelligible operations. I'm gonna say the same thing again and again and again. So okay, you can so go back home again. and read Aquinas if you want. I've no, read no, what ahead. I've read, and yeah, I'm go gonna ahead. tell you exactly, exactly. Go ahead. Okay, so they proceed by the intelligible operations. Okay, okay. so the so intelligible operations are they distinct? Are they distinct? The sun and the spirit. Oh, excuse me. Are and they, are they, they, excuse the me. Are processions they, are and they, the relations are, they are really distinct? distinct. Yeah, they're really distinct. The relations. No, hold on. Excuse me. The relations are really so, distinct. Well, wait, not the relations. What? You said the intelligible operations. The intelligible operations yes. are only virtually distinct. Allow me. You said the intelligible operations are virtually distinct. Yes, the only virtually distinct. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm waiting for it. Alright. So if the intelligible operations are virtually distinct, mm -hmm. Father, Son, Son, Holy Spirit, then how does that happen in a, in a situation where all three wills are the same? Oh my gosh. I'm what do you mean a... three wills? They have one will. I, that's, I'm asking how is it when the, when the three... I told you time okay, and time let again. Let me rephrase Listen, it. Let me rephrase you need it. To, you need to let listen to what it. I'm saying. Sure, let me rephrase it. Let I me told you one will, let right? Me, let me rephrase did it. Did I tell you one will or not? Yes, you did. Let okay, me rephrase so it. use one can will. I, I will. Use it. I will. Let me rephrase it. Mm. You said the three intelligible operations, right? Yes. Okay. No. 
Yes, what? you did. You said intelligible operations are the same. Three pr listen, that's what you just said. Listen, listen to what that. I'm saying again. He said that. Listen to what I'm saying. Did you say that or not? No, I did not say that. You did say that. I did not say that. You said that the intelligible said operations. Two, okay. Three intelligible operations. Count three intelligible operations. Sorry? Count three intelligible operations. I'll give you five thousand pounds. I don't understand what you're saying. Count three what intelligible what operations. What you're and saying I'll give you 5, is what you're saying is unintelligible. Okay. What? Itself. Because there's no such thing as three intelligible operations. Okay, so let me ask you again because I'm trying to understand your What's theology. What's an intelligible operation? I'm asking you because you're not, you operation? use that quite, you use that language. You use what's that. An, what's an intelligible operation? You use that language, not me. Why are you saying I believe in something that you don't even know what I'm telling okay, you so about? My friend, you're right. Please, please. I've told you again and again. Uh, brother, please calm down. I've told you please again calm and down. again. Calm down. I'm gonna please answer what you said. No, no. You're speaking. Oh, to me. he's keeping quiet. My bad. Go on. You said there's a relationship between Father, Son, Holy Spirit of persons, right? There's a relationship between what? There's a relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, they okay. pre they are proceeding from intelligible operations. Okay, can you explain to me? Intelligible operations are necessarily yeah. two in number, the intellect and the will. Okay. You cannot have three intelligible operations, that makes so, no, no sense. No, no, brother, I want to understand. What's the relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? You, can yeah, you? they are only distinct by the relations and what, and what differentiates are those relations? them yeah? is the procession. The procession differentiates them. What is proceeding from what? What is the proceeding from intelligible operations? What, is that mean? what does that mean? The will that are two in number can you explain what and that are means? only virtually distinct from the essence. Brother, so please. The intellect I, I, and the will. Brother, I'm answering you. No, no, the please. I'm, I'm actually will, trying to understand yeah, you. The intellect and the will. Is the intellect the and the will? The intellect and the will are the same in the nature. Okay, no. They're the same in the nature. You're not answering my question. My question is this. What's your question, brother? Listen yeah. to what I'm saying. Go on. I'm saying you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. You're, you're saying that there's a procession of intelligible operations. Yes. Which are distinct between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what you said, right? Yeah, the processions, yes, yeah. Okay. Now, I want to know what you mean by that. Okay. So, can you explain this to me, please? Okay, good. Okay, now. The father, what is the what father is, what in is the act of what's knowing proce himself what's proceeding? precedes the son, and the father and the son in the act of willing the love precedes. Say that again. The Say that again. The father, yep. in the act of knowing himself, precedes the son. In the act the of knowing himself. I'm using it logically. So, in the act he of knowing himself, he doesn't really like think so about himself. The father, in the act the of knowing just himself, using it logically. No, I'm just trying to repeat and understand. You're saying the father in the act. What of do you mean? What do you think I mean by when I say the father knows himself? This is going to be a very difficult communication. We're trying to learn from you, brother. I'm trying we're to learn from you. Are you saying the Father has a higher status? No, 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 no. He's just, we're trying to learn from you, brother. He's, he's, giving, he's giving us his Aquinas uh, theology. I want to learn about the Aquinas, your, your Thomistic understanding. You're saying the Father from what? Sorry? Say again, brother. The Father from what? The act of knowing himself what? Proceeds. The Father, logically, in the act of knowing himself, precedes the Son, which is the object known. He proceeds. That's why the proceeds. Son is called the Divine Word. Proceeds. 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 Yeah, proceeds. Okay. He said the Father proceeds. Not proceeds. Proceeds. What? No, proceeds. Becomes proceeds. 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 Proceeds or proceed? Processions mean proceed. Bro. No, brother, please. Oh, yeah. Brother. Yeah. Brother. Proceed but, uh, please. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why, why are you doing this? Processions mean proceed, bro. Why Brother, please. Why do you think? I, I, okay, no, no. Can you I'm, I'm, making, I'm making sure I know what you're saying. There's nothing that can I'm making sure I know you from the father. Uh, brother, you know there's, no need, there's no need to be defensive. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, to not being defensive. I'm trying to learn from what you're saying. I think you're just being like trying to be manipulative, twisting my words. It's not going to work. No, I'm saying. I am. No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to no, To the contrary. It, to the contrary, me, brother. Me the Critical. Tell me again now. When you're saying the father. Critical Thomas. Yeah. What's the relationship in layman's language? Between the father and the son. What's going on here? Yeah, What's happening with What does that there's mean? There's nothing. There's okay. Sorry, sorry for the confusion. The two fingers, they're not actually like ontologically real. If you're saying like obviously logically. Now, can you just yeah, tell me what's going on the between father, the father and the son? Yeah, I'm explaining to you. Please. Please don't interrupt me. Okay. The father precedes the son. What does that mean? The father precedes the son. A procession is just a relation between two things. So what is that? What like, is that relation? There's a heavy body. Okay. The relation between the heavy body and its ability to fall to the center of the earth is just a relation. That's about it. So what is the relation? I'm, I'm, we're gonna use an example. You've given an example, but can yeah. I know what the example I'm gonna use, is? I'm gonna, between give, the two I'm gonna use another. Yeah. What? What did you say? You, you've used an analogy. Yeah. Right. But I want to know what you what you perceive the relationship between the father and the son is. What are they doing with it? It's each just other? a procession. It's just what? a procession between the act of the knower and the object known. What does that mean? Oh my god, I just explained it. No, okay. Don't use the word. I'm trying don't, to. I'm trying to. Don't, 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 don't oh, use the word procession. Okay. No, okay. No, no, no. Okay. What, I'm don't use, don't use the word procession. Yeah, yeah. I'm, trying trying you? You. Yeah. I'm trying to know you. I'm trying to know you. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to know you. Yeah. I know you as a Christian man. Okay? Yeah. You exist right there. Okay? Yeah. 
Now, in the act of me knowing you, I get this object in my intellect that you're a Christian man. I don't even know your name, right? That object is what proceeds from the substance of the Father. So, right? sorry, I, I don't the understand. Father. What, 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 what is coming from you, from the Father and Son? What, what's going I on? I thought there? that you understood Thomistic metaphysics. Brother, I thought you I read Aristotle. Brother, I'm and now you don't to, understand anything I'm saying. I'm ignoramus. I'm ignoramus. You don't understand please, anything please. I'm saying. Yes, I I'm trying to understand it from you. Oh my God. You've read more Aristotle. Uh, I'm sorry, I've never. To, uh, Tom, uh, Thomistic philosophy. Sorry, than sorry. I, I never knew. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not a Thomistic expert. I never claim to be. I'm asking you, right? I'm not a Thomistic expert. Uh, but you've read more than I have on that. Yeah. So I'm asking you as someone who's read more than I have on that. No problem. I want to uh, learn. I'm here to learn as well. Why should everyone learn from me? I learn from nobody. I want to learn from you. Huh? You're asking okay, me questions that I've answered no, but, again and again and again. No, no, but allow me to ask it again. Okay, good. Because again. if you said this, yeah. Who understood what he said? Like, I think I he said right. proceed, I'm, but I'm, I want to know if no, 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 hey, hey, no, no. Uh, say, come here, come here. Critical, come, come in. Let's let's bring I, I, I people that are like you know intellectually no, no, sure, there. Sure. But I want to understand. Sing, come, come, yes, brother. come, brother. Yes, half because half the half. audience doesn't understand us. So I want to I want to tell you something. Right? So is, and the, is he representing? First of all, is he representing it correctly? So I'm representing. I don't, I, I don't know what. Oh, okay. okay, so cool. Now I told yeah. him, right? Yeah. I told him that you can explain this rationally how the intelligible operations make the relations really distinct in the Trinity, right? Uh, uh, what Aquinas said in uh, question 28. Oh, as in so, the distinction between like intellect and will. Uh, okay. My fucking okay. guy! Nigerians, okay. we got in the bag! Mashallah, come. Can, 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 can you explain to me? Maybe you can help me. We're trying to understand on his... Under, on his he's, There's no other side, Let me, let me say, uh, say it. There's no other side. Would you say... Yeah, I'm gonna block that one. The Father, the Son, okay. the Holy Spirit, they don't have separate wills. Yeah, they don't. They have, they don't the, have they're one identical will. In wills. Identical wills. No separate wills. No separate power. No. They have one will. Uh, one power. Okay, yeah. no problem. Well, can you explain to me what the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Son, the Holy Spirit is? I don't really understand the question, but if what you mean is what makes those things like distinct, for example, like okay. what makes the Father and Fine. the Son Fine. Yeah. distinct. So it's going to be due to the notions. So Aquinas has this like finally. No, what okay. There was some good wrestling going on. I, there. I know, but if he, I got called. So okay. Uh, go ahead, so go. I'm assuming you've read um, the prima pause on this issue. Yes. Don't assume I've read anything. Please start. No, because deal, deal with me like I'm a complete beginner, no. which I am. Tell me in the, okay. from the beginning. The only reason now, is when you when you talk about Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah, the only reason is is because yeah, yeah. if you were explaining something to me yeah. and I already have assumed prior knowledge, there would be yeah. no reason as to why no, you need oh, to explain it. Sid, I'm exactly. sorry, I'm not asking you to ask me what I've read. I'm asking you. No, just, I'm just saying if you're familiar. Uh, Sid, I'm just I'm not familiar. That's why I'm asking okay, question. There, there you go. Okay. I'm, the, I'm asking a question. Yeah, yeah. He's saying that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. they have one will. Yeah. They have one power. Yeah. My question to you is. So therefore, what is the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? What relationship do they have with each other? So the relationship what, that they and, have with each other? And going back to what you said, what makes them distinct? Go ahead. So what makes them distinct would be the notion. So Aquinas um, has this idea yeah. that with certain persons, there's going to be certain concepts attributed to them. So for the Father, there's going to be two notions. I believe it's inassibility. And Explain paternity. That. paternity yeah. So inascibility is going to be the idea that the father does not proceed from any person in a logical sense. Exactly. Okay. And then paternity is going to be the idea that the father um, begets the son. Now there's going to be another idea as well, which is going to be. Yeah, I'm just explaining. Yeah, you don't need to. Yeah. So <laughs> when it comes to the idea of the son, uh, and I'll come back to the father because there's one more, but it has to be explained in light of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Uh, the son is going to have the idea of filiation, which is the passion in regards to the action of paternity. And I'm assuming you know what action and passion. Now, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, there's going to be this idea of passive spiration. It's the passion in relation to the action of active spiration which is attributed to the Father as well. And in Catholic missiology, specifically on the issue of the Filioque, they would also attribute active spiration to the person of the Son as well. So there's around five notions in God. And so these things are going to act as the distinguishing like, notions. So, so what makes the Father distinct from the Son? Oh, that's the fact that he has inassibility and eternity. I explained that before. Can you explain it again, please? So, inassibility mm. is the idea that the father does not proceed from any other person. Okay. So, so paternity sure. is just going to be the fact that the father so, begets the son. The father does not proceed from any other person. Yeah. 
Yet the son does. The son proceeds from the father, yeah. From the father. How? How? Yeah, how does that happen? Intelligible operations. Oh, yeah. So the idea, is this the, the thing? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Aquinas, again, I'm assuming you haven't read it. Yeah. Aquinas says in question. Hello. Aquinas says in question 28, and I think we went over this last time we had dinner. Um, yeah, yeah. Aquinas says in question 28 um, that on the part of God, you could think of, uh, in an analogous way, um, on the part of God, you could think of the procession of the sun as some sort of intelligible operation. So the idea. What does that mean? Yeah, so the procession of, I believe it's the procession of the intellect itself in the knower. So the idea. The yeah, so he pulls from Augustine who uses the idea of knowledge in the Trinity. So the person of the Father knowing everything, you would agree that the person of the Father knows everything. I'm asking if you agree. I don't believe in the person of the Father. I mean, so it's, we could just use the, principle, Muslim, so the principle of God, right? Principle okay. of God as existence. Would he know everything? Yeah. Okay. Would he also know himself? Oh, can we just stick to? I'm, I'm learning I'm from you. I'm actually. I understand. Yeah, yeah. And the way so can, that. Can we get to? And I am. I the actually, this, this is the relation. What yeah. is the relation? The relation of the what, father what did you begetting call it? the Intelli son. Uh, intelligent operations. Intelligible, intelligible operations. Intelligible operations. Yeah, can you explain that to me? I was, yeah. and I was doing that the way Aquinas did, yeah, exactly. by starting with the person of God, for our Father. Now, since you rejected that, I just substituted the word Father for Allah, so it can make sense to you. No, but we don't believe in that. So God when God that, says, for example, yeah. that God knows, so when Aquinas says that God knows everything, he also says that God knows himself in a supreme and eminent way. Sure. Now, he also knows is that himself. the Father or the Triune God? Uh, this is referring to the idea of how you could conceive of the Father knowing himself. So, okay. he says that the Father, since in knowing himself, knows everything about himself, including his property of existence and essence as exactly. being identical. Say that, that again? Thing, oh, including his property of existence and essence as being identical, he would also say that this knowledge of himself, this self-knowledge, would also really exist. Now, this is going to be constitutive of a second reality. And this is what we would assume sexual emanation is in this sense. This is the analogy that Aquinas tries to suppose, and it comes from Augustine and I believe Boethius as well. Okay, yeah, Boethius, so, yeah. Okay, beautiful. So, I, I, uh, I so it's not like how are you? Yeah. Intellectual yeah. emanation. It's, it's only just going to be like analogous to the way that this thing can be done. So. Can, you, can you explain through analogy yeah. how intellectual emanation will work? How intellectual emanation yeah. will work? From the so, father's son, for example. So it's just going to be on the part of the mind itself. So the mind itself is going to conceive of itself of as itself. doing the thing. Yep. Exactly. And then by okay. reason of doing that, there's going to I be think some sort of so yeah. When you say intellectual emanation, yeah. is there something happening from the father which is distinct and then leading to the son? Uh, no. So for Aquinas, you would say that this is a temporal and infinitely present. So he just believes that you say? infinitely a present. Yeah. So this is actually something that Ibn. So, sorry, sir. Say that again. Infinitely, infinitely present. present. We were both saying at the same time, infinitely present. present. Yeah. So the idea, yeah. right, is um, just, and this is from like classical, yeah. um, it's just classical understandings of metaphysics, both okay. in the Islamic tradition as well as the Christian tradition, as yeah. you know. The idea is going to be that since God is going to be outside of time, these operations, these ad intra, uh, meaning uh, within, uh, these ad intra operations of God are going, Pardon me. You're doing right. You're doing, you're doing good, Habibi. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. So these are intra operations on the part of God, yeah. right? Um, uh, there was not going to be a time in which the process began, and sure. it should not be seen as a sort of process in any sense. There was no temporal succession of events. It's just simply for him is going to be the case, which is just like the idea of it is the case that God exists okay. rather than there's can a point I, in time when God started to exist or sure. that God continues. From to my exist. understanding, yes. and both of you have said this before. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Aquinas believes in the divine simplicity, right? Yes, he does. Yes. Okay, sure. Now, is the father ontologically separate from the son? No. No. Is, okay, fine. So the and father. And by ontology, what do you mean? So the father and the son are the same. I just wanted to ask you, by ontology, what do you mean? Before you do the thing. Now hold on. Is the father ontologically separate from the son? What does that mean? Because I have a def I have an idea of ontology. Uh, right? um, are they separate entities? Are they separate entities? Yes. If by entity you just mean existences, then no, they're not separate existences. Pardon? No, they're not separate no. existences. So for Aquinas, the existence of the Father and the Son are going to be the same. Yeah. However, the and hypostasis, yeah. which is the underlying reality of the Father, the underlying so, so reality of the Son. So would it be fair to say 
that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are just names for the same thing? They're not names for the same thing, no. Well, they are they names know. that are going to pick out specific underlying realities. Now, yeah. the hypostasis of the Father has the same existence, as Aquinas says, as the hypostasis of the Son, due to the idea that the existence of God is identical to the essence of God, of which you would agree, right? That existence and essence in God are the same. There's different opinion among scholars. We will come I'm to asking my... for your opinion. No, but there's different opinion about the reason why is if no, but, as, but, The reason why I'm asking this yeah, question yeah, yeah. is because if you have a different notion or idea of these concepts like essence, existence, is, sure. um, then, yeah. hypostasis, reality, so on, then we're obviously going to be talking past each other. No, no, I agree. I agree. Right, so, and because so, you agree, sure. just, just uh, and just because you agree, just yeah. right now, yeah. could you please adopt a view that is either that you agree with the idea of that what? S, uh, no, I don't you, need to adopt. You don't. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I can admit, uh, agnostic to that point. Why would you be agnostic to Why whether not? God has no, no, existence? No, no, no. no. You, you've asked me the question about whether there's a distinction between essence and existence. Yeah. The, my response to that is, I've looked at different uh, traditions about that. And I'm still making my mind. That's so my, you don't know? No, my, uh, I haven't made up my mind on that. So you don't know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and that's yeah, okay, sure, sure. right? So, so I'm coming back to you now, mm -hmm. and I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Which is that, is the father a separate thing to the son? Is the father a separate thing? Yeah. No. And the reason why okay. is because in Aquinas' uh, scholastic theology, okay. there are definitions of distinction. Now, yes. just so that so yes. that I don't become pedantic, right? No, no, good. You understand what a, um, a real distinction is, correct? Explain to me what, what you think it is. Because Not what let, I think. Let, let, let me, let, hold on. This is very important. Let me tell you why. The reason why this is important is because Aquinas uses terms yep. that are not used in the same context in the same way by other thinkers. So I need to always ask you what you mean by it. I think a real distinction Wait, when does Aquinas just... use no, different no, words in different contexts? He, context? he, he does. Could you me. give an example? No, I don't want to. That's like saying, no. trust me, bro. I need you to give an example. Yeah, so sure. Uh, for example, the essence and uh, existence distinction. When does he give a different definition so, of the essence and existence no, distinction? No, let me explain. So, for example, in the Islamic tradition, yeah. where you have like Avicenna or uh, Ibn, Ro Ibn Rushd yeah. or Avi Rose and these yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. they have a complete understanding of that. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah has a complete understanding of that. So, no, 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 so hey, Avicenna does not have a different understanding so, of uh, yeah, essence. Yeah, no, he does yeah, not. So no, he does not. It's very important. Brother, so. please, uh, no, he does not. Yeah, in Islamic no, philosophy, not. like the Aristotelian prove category, it, the Aristotelian category of like existence is pretty much the same bro, from... He's just saying shit, bro. Yeah, I mean, look, well, I'm, just I'm, I'm sensing an extreme disrespect from you, but I don't see why. I don't see why. You're uh, sensing a, a disrespect yeah, yeah, from me. But it's, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, it's fine. I'm so sorry. Hail Muhammad Ijab. No, no, don't hail to me. It's just, Thank you. Just, don't worry, there's no like, guns inside or anything. Look, brother, brother, bro brother. Just one second. The My point is this die. if, because oh, this is, let me explain. Divine simplicity is the idea that God is not composed of anything in terms of parts or attributes even which have a separate ontological distinction from other attributes no not really no it does mean that let me, let me, no, let me explain let me, let, me, let me finish that's, that's let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me let me explain i will correct you then, no good, hold yeah. on you don't need to correct me no because you're wrong so for you're, example you're, no, you're let actually me, wrong hold on so like this it, is the first time me, i'm saying that you're wrong no, like no, you are wrong i know you say that so you can say what you like i know because it's true you are wrong do people that believe in divine simplicity yeah believe that god has actual power has actual power yeah actual power as an ontological entity separate from the essence he no, just think, he thinks he thinks real yes or no. distinctions yes or no. are separation yes or no. yeah which is the issue yeah so that's the issue so uh, so yeah so divine simply don't believe everyone. that god has a separate attribute known as power, uh, known as actual power and actual power isn't even the term so there are two is, ideas is, of power can, can I'm going question? to explain there is, are two does god have actual power or not again i'm going to explain yeah so the idea among the divine simplists right yeah is that there are two types of power so yeah. active not actual active active power and impassive power uh, in Latin, it's going to be like active potentia okay. and then passive potentia. Now, yeah. for Aquinas, God has active potentia in the highest degree. However, you were wrong when you said that divine simplists believe that the attributes have to be separate things. No. Uh, they, no, no. Let me ask you a question. They don't believe no, that. No, let me ask you a question. Their problem let of composition... Brother, I'm going please. to just finish. Look, Brother, please. I have to finish. No, let it be a dialogue. Let it be a dialogue. I know. And it's my part of go, the dialogue okay, right go now. Ahead, go Thank ahead. you. Go so, ahead. when it comes to Aquinas, Aquinas believes that the problem is going to be in composition. Those two things don't have to be separate. For example, 
the distinction between a body and a soul. A uh, body and a soul aren't separate, okay. right? Even in heaven, yet they are still composite. Okay. okay? Let's, let's, and let's... the reason that they're composite is because they are something sure. about the subject, and I've told you this before, there's something about the subject that is not the whole of the subject. Now, my question no, no, brother, to please, you would no, be, in, in this dialogue, let me come back on this. would be if you agree brother, with that. Please, brother. Oh, my what, back, please. What is, the, what is the knowledge of God? What is knowledge? What knowledge? is knowledge? Yeah, what's knowledge? Knowledge uh, for us is just going to be the possession of a form without becoming that form. No, not for us. What does the word knowledge mean? What does knowledge mean? Yeah, what's the, what is the distinction between knowledge and power? Explain it to me, please. So, again, you're being vague with the question. Because I explained what the term knowledge meant, and then you said, what does it mean again? And then I just explained it again. Okay, brother, this is a simple question, of all due respect. Uh, knowledge, really. you know, it is. Because no, otherwise everyone would have the same definition. Well, they pretty much do actually on this. No, they don't. No, they don't. Well, they have a very similar definition on knowledge. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, well, please. You have modern analyticists that have like just okay, okay, believe, please. but then there's wrong. like gets say, it. Okay, we're wrong. Okay, I'm very wrong. No problem. When I say this person has power, is it different to saying that he has knowledge? Is it, is it different? On the part of him, yes. So. Oh, in the part of him, yes. Okay. On the part of him. So with him, for example, if I say he has power, I'd explain or strength, something like that. I'm talking about his ability to move things, to operate his will, right? When I'm talking about knowledge, I'm talking about how much he has information in his mind, for example. Information Would you accept? In his mind. Information. So, or, uh, uh, cause, cause uh, for, again, example, knowledge, so, so, for example, knowledge, in the classical definition of it, which I've come across, which most people agree with, is idraq al which is the idea of knowing things which are informative. So knowing, so, sorry, so, so, sorry. so knowledge sorry, is sorry, sorry, knowing sorry, things sorry, that are informative. Sorry, sorry, I made a mistake. You did. So. Uh, in knowledge is having possession of informative facts. Okay? Having possession of, of informative, informative facts. Yeah, information. So, having like, information. And again, so, okay, you said you this have, is the classical. I, yeah. I just want to clarify something. Hold on, one second. You one said second. it's the classical definition. Hold on, right? hold on. Hold on. Hold is, on. That, is that a Aristotelian? Do you, do, you is accept, that a do you accept there's a difference between knowledge and power or not? Again, I can't answer that in question general. because I'm. If I say this person has knowledge, the and reason, he has power. Is it, is it the same thing or different thing? Hold on, hold on. Okay, what I mean by the knowledge is... The reason I can't me, answer the so, question so ask, Brother, please. He's asked me a question now. He's asked me a question. He said, what yeah, do I mean by... I said, so what I'm not going to say is he has knowledge. Say, if, if he reads, for example, he can take that information inside. So he has possession of information. If I say he has power or strength, it means he can move situations like bench press, this kind of thing. That's, That's the difference between the two things. Would you agree? Is that a vernacular understanding of the difference between knowledge and power? Not exactly, that's more so like aspectival. So uh, whatever it is, would you accept this distinction here? In the case of this man? But it's not going to be on the part of what you No, meant. no, in the case of this man, is there, is there a distinction between knowledge and power, yes or no? You're moving away from the definition. I'm asking a question, is there yeah, a distinction? Yeah, because you're moving away from the definition, which I wanted to ask Is there you a distinction? You're just driving is, a brother, specific Brother, is argument. there a distinction between knowledge and power? Yes, in now I can get back to the point of discussion that I wanted to raise before. Is there a distinction between knowledge I already, and... I referred to my answer before, I said yes. No. Yes, yes, okay, excellent. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I okay. now get to respond. Now, in this... Sorry, There's no, sorry. This, I haven't asked you a question yet. I haven't asked, you just no, asked me, is no, there a distinction between power and knowledge? Is I, that a question? I haven't asked you a question yet. Yes, you did. No, did, I, I, I want to... No, but I was there preambling. Is, knowledge and power? is that a question, no. yes or no? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so pre now that I'm, I'm preambling. Now I'm preambling. That you've the now, with God, is there a different... Is, is there a distinction between knowledge and power or not? I wanted to touch With God, is there a distinction between knowledge and power or not? I wanted to touch on the point... Just to interrupting me. Is, with God, is so there the a distinction between knowledge so and power again, or not? There's something that needs to be touched on. And with God, is there a there's distinction between knowledge and power or not? On. There's a reason why it needs to be touched on. It, with God, is there a distinction between knowledge and power or not? I'm just going to continue. Because you is said... Is there a distinction? Hold on. Let him so you said... You don't know. I know, just want to... No, can you, can you explain? Because you've been very smart before. Is there a distinguishing God? Is there a distinction between God and power? He just wants to drive a script. Knowledge and power, is there a distinction Are you running? Why are you running? I know, I'm asking a question. I'm not running, I'm asking a question. How can you answer that? Is there a distinction? Because you know you got bored of that, but No, is there a question? Because you know you got bored of that, but I'm just going to continue. So, is there a distinction or classically, is going to be an Aristotelian notion. Now, which one? Aristotelian, so it's going to be hylomorphic, right? I'm asking so a question. Is there a distinction you between said knowledge and power? Is or not? I already said that. On the yes part no? of a man, yes, because I'm, I'm part of God. On the part of God? Yes. Yeah, on the part of God, uh -huh. within God, there's not going to be a distinction. Uh -huh. Now, again, the reason why.
So go, oh, is going to be an issue. yeah, beautiful. Okay, okay, excellent. Yeah, no, no, no. So I'm God doesn't know. I'm going to finish God my question. God doesn't know things. God is ignorant. I'm just going to Wait. finish my question. God is ignorant. No. Your God is ignorant. My definition, yeah, thank you. Right? It's, because, God, it's, it's again, God knowledgeable or not knowledgeable. Now, the reason is, is because he actually has it's a God position God knowledge view of knowledge. Now, again, no, I'm going to finish. It's God knowledgeable or not. I'm just going to, your Muslim brother is telling you to let just me finish. This is God knowledgeable or not. This is, let me complete. It's God knowledgeable or not. Let me complete. This is low. Let me finish. The fact that you can't let him talk is low. No, 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 no. He's years younger than you. He's not a Christian. He's a Muslim. He's years younger than you. Is, is God powerful talk. or not? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is we God can, powerful we can or not? these questions, it's fine. Is God powerful now, or not? As I was Bro. explaining before, right, God powerful and I think or everyone else yeah. wants to actually hear the answer that I have. Go ahead. The idea of power is going to be the ability to actualize potency. potency. This is the exactly. classical definition, okay. not what you said. Okay. Now, the definition of knowledge is going to be the ability to possess a form without becoming the form itself. Yeah. This is a Thomistic idea as well as an Aristotelian idea. And this okay. is the classical idea. Yeah, sure. Now, again, on the part of God, God's ability to possess forms is actually simply his active power. Now, we can conceive of those what two is different active power? notions. Its active power would be the ability to actualize potencies. Now, one of the potencies that is being actualized is his ability to be able to possess forms. Now, I'm saying that on the part of God, God eternally is able to possess these things. However, the distinction between God's possession of forms and our possession of forms is in us, we are able to possess some sorts of, you know, temporal contingent form. You, you, whereas, you, only, you only provided the definition between knowledge and power, but what he, what he asked, asked it was a is there a distinction between, between knowledge both, yeah. and power? Yes. And I'm explaining that the distinction is going to be on the part of the reason reasoning. Now the reason why, and this is something... I don't understand. Yeah, so Avicenna had a similar idea, but he's going, but he wasn't necessarily right. an so analogist. So there is no distinction on the... Let's yeah, be clear, let's, now, be, clear. let's be clear, hold on, let's hold be clear, let's be clear. There is no distinction on a Thomistic view on knowledge and power in an actual sense. There is none. Oh my gosh. Okay, because look. There is none. So knowledge because, oh my gosh, power. that's the case. Knowledge and power. Don't sign that point. That's divine simplicity. That's why they can say the Father is the Son, the Son is the Holy Spirit. Why do you keep manipulating us? Why don't you let us talk? Manipulating anyone, man. Why don't you let us talk? Why don't you let Christians talk? Why do you let 20 year old Christians talk? That's why you believe in what you do. Why don't you let teenagers talk? Why don't you let teenagers talk? Okay, so why do you interrupt us then? Where's the respect? Talk about this. So why were you complaining about me disrespecting you if you don't need the respect? The issue comes where you say that there is no distinction. There's no distinction. All right. What did I also say? So that's how we understand it now. You're saying on the path to God. There is there, uh, brother, now, my, my, said, my brother, my brother, now, my brother, my brother, my brother, was that my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, the reason why, why there's going he to believes be a yes. that there's a distinction between the, the, uh, the definition Father and the Holy Spirit is because they don't even believe in the of knowledge, power and, and knowledge, power, power, distinction. God is divinely simple. Different exactly. things. Absolute now, existence. that's not an issue. But that's yeah. incommensurate the reason with the Trinity. That we exactly. have, How can you say that God is divinely simple but at the same time have a Trinity? Exactly. Wait, How can what? you have a, a, a divine simplicity and a Trinity? Exactly. Because Aquinas it's ridiculous. Make, because Aquinas so, so, so they don't, they that, they don't even want to distinguish so, between the Aquinas power of God and the knowledge of God, but at the same time you can have a distinction God. between the now, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And, and they know it doesn't work like that. Gives, They're trying to force two divine ideas together, which don't work together. You know we're going to talk you, that's why you keep interrupting us. You know where it's going, that's why you're side accident. Knowledge and power in him is the only thing God only bridges. So let me go back to the guys. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain because a lot of it was uh, philosophical mumbo jumbo. So the idea of divine simplicity. Not, he, they, are, they are completely impossible to speak to, but I'll speak to the people. Because so the reason that you don't want to speak to me. No, I will speak to you. No, you, you won't. No, you won't. Do, do you what chance? you were doing is one you were chance. repeating the question. So I'm going to ask you Go Do you believe God's existence is different from his essence? He said you don't know. The yeah. question that I want to ask you now is Does God have multiple attributes? Yes. Okay. And these things are going to be non identical. Do you, do you to sorry, others, excuse me. To do you believe Why? that? No. Answer your question. I want to know. What do you mean? I asked you a question. I asked you a question. If my divine. So you, so you, you don't have to answer. answer. That's why he oh, no, because answer. he did the yes. same. Because he did the same I thing before. Yes. Now you try to have a second dialogue. You said you yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah. You said so, on the okay. part of the band. Yeah. So, so, so you don't you want to talk. Oh, it's okay. okay. No, oh, you scared. No, no, no. Why are you scared? So, so all right, on the part of the hold on, hold on. So the reason is is because right. Please, brother. If you have the attribute, for example, of knowledge. And if I do piss you off, what's going to happen? What's happening? There's two Davids and one Goliath. What's going on? What's going to happen if I piss you off? What's going to happen? Yeah, I don't understand why. So don't speak like that, brother. So yeah, let's just come to the point. When I come here, so. The idea huh? is this, right? Are you trying a teenager now? Yeah, yeah. 
You turn the yeah, teenager. Yeah, yeah, okay, so what are you gonna Why do? Why are you friending a teenager? I'll, 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 what are you gonna do? You're talking to me. What are you gonna do? Negative man. Huh? So, you're saying if you don't do this again, so I just want to know yeah, what your consequences no, no, no. are. What so, your consequences? So, knowledge is something. Brother, please, you don't have any consequences. Hold on, hold on. This is what I'm trying to say. Why can't we just have a conversation? Why does it have to descend to this? Because they're not. No, no. I'm not. I'm not asking him. I'm not respect. I've been very polite with this. Yeah, I've been very polite. Have I been? Have I been polite with them or not? No, you've not. Okay. Have I been polite with them or not? I've been polite. Right. I've been polite. I don't think you have not been reasonable. I, I have been reasonable. And the reason I, is You've asked the question, has God, God got multiple attributes? Yes. yes. And I said yes. And then I said, and I, do you believe said, in that? Then you started talking over me. I, no. What you, so you did what's the same, point of this you conversation? Did the same thing before. Before. Him, like, now what I'm you did sorry. before is you tried I, to say, are they the same, are they the same? And then I tried to explain uh, the classical God's definition. knowledge the same as God's power? Now again, when we come to the specific attributes... Why can't you answer my question? I refer to what I said before. Now when it comes to... I refer to what I said before. Okay, just so. So you don't want to answer the question? Because in this dialogue, the question that needs question. to be asked is whether knowledge is something okay. about bro, Allah that isn't the whole of Allah. You're, 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 is knowledge but, something brother, about brother, Allah that isn't the whole brother, of Allah? Yes or no? Is knowledge that, something When you say whole and part, what do you mean by that? So a part is going to be, in basic myriology, something about a subject that is not the whole of a subject. Yeah. That is just going to be yeah, one no, part. Yeah, no, but the reason why I'm basic myriology is there's nine different definitions of a part. Exactly. There's no, nine there's nine different usages of a part. Yeah, yeah sure. That's why it's important to understand. under the because same definition in basic of a part. So basic myriology is nine definitions. Mm -hmm. You can say this is a part of his personality, or you can say it's a part of a cake, and they mean two different things. Now, the part of so, a cake... So, hold on. So, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so, what, what, what we were talking before, I asked you, is the hold knowledge... Hold on, because we're talking about myriology uh, now. Oh, you interrupted right? him. Now, the reason I interrupted him is because he wanted to move away from myriology. He wanted to move away from myriology to a previous question, as you noticed. Friend. Uh, you're, you're kind of, specifically. You want to speak for two minutes and me for two minutes? Is that if fair? you are speaking on myriality specifically, you're not fair? going to move to a different Do you want to thing? speak for two minutes and then me for two minutes? Is Again, that fair? If you only answer the specific things that have been brought to the discussion, sure. Maybe he was going back to that. So if but that had you, would you like to speak settled. for one minute and then I speak for one minute? No, would that fine. be fair? So no, that's fine. I'll, I, I can speak for Because I can't speak time. to you right now. I feel like I can't discuss with you. No, You're an impossible like person you to speak with. I feel like you can't discuss with me because there are certain things you want to drive down. Should I put this this Look, I can watch put a on. I can put a timer no, on my this phone. one minute, one each. I can each. put a timer on my phone. All right, you right, go and first, then go. and then I'll answer okay, okay, again. Okay, 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 I'm going to go back and forth. No, it's fine. fine. You can have we your can, phone. We can put, we can put you a got a minute. Phone, right? Go, so, please. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to just put a timer on the phone, right? And what I want to establish is a specific idea. So one minute, go, right? Now, you believe that God has multiple attributes. Now, the question I asked him was, pertaining to knowledge, is knowledge something about God that isn't the whole of what God is? Now, I then gave this reason because under Mariology, every single definition of a part, whether proper or improper parts, are going to coalesce under the same notion of that of a subject that it is not pertaining to the whole. Part of a cake is going to be something about a cake that isn't the whole of a cake. Part of a tree, same thing. Parts of time, something about the general constants of time that is not the whole of time. So, to answer this very specific question, is knowledge something about Allah that is not the whole of Allah? Now, if you cannot answer the question, please explain certain reasons why. And if you can answer the question, then we can move on with that form of dialogue. Because that is the thing about divine simplicity that is trying to be denied. Composition okay, your time is up, yeah? on the part of God. Now my time's up. Oh. Okay, so you have one minute. My view is, there's three views in Islam, okay? There's the view of the divine simplicity, uh, divine simplicity which is the view of Averroes, and the view of Ibn Sina. It's the same view as... Uh, <laughs> as espoused by to uh, Thomas Aquinas, but it's not the same. The second view is the view of the Muatesilis, which is that the attributes of God are within the essence of God, which is why I said it's, it's a very important distinction. Is that they all believe it's all within the same essence. So the attributes and essence uh, distinction, they don't make one. It's all within the same essence. And the third view is the view of the Ash'aris and the Hanbalis, which is that the attributes of God are ontologically separate from the essence of God. That's the view that I personally take. The, the view of the Ash'aris and the Hanbalis, yeah. which is the view that, that God has multiple attributes, all of which are uh, separate and distinct about. For example, the knowledge of God is different from the power of God, the power of God is different from the uh, will of God, and so on and so forth. Yeah, separate. Separate. So, separate. So, my question is, do you believe that the knowledge of God is the same as the power of God, or are they different? Time was up. So, I'm glad I'm. Oh yeah, so, so, I'm glad you actually brought that uh, clarification, uh, which was not necessarily a clarification because that was. Sorry. Already, you know,
I'm glad you said that they were separate, because that would mean that God is going to be in a greater form of composition, right? The person of Allah, you would believe that Allah is going to be some sort of um, subject of reference, so a subject that you can refer to. I'll suppose my time because that was so you would believe that Allah is a subject of reference and because of this the subject is going to be both the essence and the attributes the person of Allah is going to be for you both the essence as the attributes because you believe that the essence is separate from the attributes as you've said now because that is the case it is still going to be part of the subject Allah the individual that holds, that formally constitutes both the essence and the attributes. As you can see, there's going to be a problem of composition there. So to answer your question fairly, as I have five seconds, if I run a bit over time, forgive me. Um, on the part of God, I would, for the purpose of this conversation, I'm going to ascribe to a Western view. Yeah. All right, sure. Yeah. So I've just explained, I've answered your question very clearly. I said that, yes, I believed in the essence of God, they're different from the attributes of God. There's different separate. Answer, separate, no problem. When I say the separate, I'm not talking about separability from an uh, physical perspective that you can. No, uh, I, I would never, I would never see that. Brother, my time. Sorry, sorry. I'll uh, pause, I'll pause. I would never accept that. Yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah, yeah, I paused it when I was speaking. Because I don't want to, you know. That's the view of, as I say, the Hanbalis and the Ashais and the Maturidais. The view that the God has essence and he has attributes. And that the, uh, the attributes are ontologically different from the essence of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that is my view. And I believe that the power of God is different from the knowledge of God. So we can distinguish when we say that the knowledge of God, we're talking about his ability to know or uh, to, to perceive information, to perceive information. His power is his ability to do things. Now, what I'm saying is just as I am able to distinguish between godly power and godly knowledge, on your view of divine simplicity, is God have real power which is distinguishable, discernible from God's knowledge or not? That's all it is. So, the question, the question you asked is whether they are discernible or not. That's actually going to be on the part of the reason, reasoning. Now again, the reason why they are going to be distinguishable is, as Aquinas explains, there are certain divine perfections as instituted into creatures that allow us to, by way of analogy, apply them to God. We can still say that God has power if by power we mean the ability to actualize potencies. Sorry? Uh, power we mean the... Sorry, I just have to pause there. Active you know, potencies. The ability to actualize potencies. Potency. I'll continue. So, because God has the ability to actualize potencies, we can ascribe that to God. And because God is able to possess forms, we can also ascribe it to God. However, the divine perfection of knowledge and power on the part of God are going to be the same thing as his existence, as Aquinas explains. Now, bear in mind, your question was on whether we can know these different things. Now, my question to you, as I have 10 seconds left, is going to be, again, whether these things are going to be something about the subject Allah that are not the whole yeah, of the subject Allah. Please answer that specific question if you can. From one sense, yes, to answer your question. From one sense, yes. It's something about the subject Allah, which is not about the whole of Allah. In one sense, yes. The answer is yes. Because when we talk about the power of God, in one sense, we're talking about something about Allah, which is not about, which is not an exhaustive list of all the things about Allah. Because mm -hmm. when we talk about the knowledge, so the answer is completely yes, yes. Now, the second thing I'm saying to you now is, we have a very clear idea. God has power, God has knowledge, God has will. Is it not the case? that on your divine simplicity view of Thomas Aquinas, that in fact, there is no difference, there's no real ontological difference between power and knowledge. That's why you can say, well, actually the father is the son from one perspective, or the will of the father is the will of the son from one perspective, because all you're doing is, you're playing games with divine simplicity, but you're trying to have your cake and eat it both. Because in, in reality, you said that God is, his power is his, his ability to actualize Actualize potencies. How can that be the case without compositional uh, attribution? Go ahead. Okay, so appreciate it. Now, because you answered yes to that question, that would mean that you accept that God would have metaphysical parts. Now, because you accept that God has metaphysical parts, you accept metaphysical composition in God. So you're a compositionist by that view. Now, the second idea is that due to being a compositionist, your God would be metaphysically finite because all things that are metaphysically composite would be metaphysically finite. Now, to answer the question of Aquinas and power and knowledge, as I've explained before, 
the distinction between real relations can still exist under Aquinas' Thomistic view. So Aquinas doesn't believe that there can't be any distinctions between the persons. He believes that the persons are really distinct. And the reason he believes they're really distinct is because in relation to the essence, the Father and the Son are going to be identical. But in relation to each other, which is what a real relation is, they can still be distinct. So that's not an issue. So just to answer the question quickly before my time runs Your time is already up. Yeah, no, I just have the... I'll give you some more time. Yeah, thank you. exactly what you said. No, not exactly. So, just to explain what you're you, um, asking, would you accept, therefore, that your God is metaphysically finite because your God is metaphysically composite? All right, so the kind of composition that we think would lead to that kind of conclusion is the kind of composition which means that if you remove a thing or increase a thing or put something into it, that it either goes larger if it's increased or it gets smaller when it's reduced. And that is something, for example, that if I were to is something which would be susceptible to uh, decomposition or would be susceptible to disassembly or susceptible to what you call the principle of separability. So if something can be actually separated, we don't believe that God's knowledge can be separated from his power mm. in an actual ontological sense. Mm -hmm. It will be that sense which would cause the conclusion that you're talking about. So we don't believe that God is temporal in the sense that you're talking about. You have answered all your questions. Now it's your turn to answer the question, which is if you don't believe a God that's knowing and that's powerful in that real sense, then you, what kind of God do you really believe in? You're closer to being an atheist than you are to being a Christian because the, you, you believe in a God with effectively no attributes. Right, he's out. not powerful, he's not, no is that difference. true or not? So, this is very important because you try to argue the kind of composition that would go to that is if it can be taken away or added to. However, inseparability... Uh, five minutes. Yeah, so, inseparability does not reg uh, disregard parthood. For example, the distinction between a body and a soul in heaven. Bodies and souls are inseparable in heaven, yet they are still going to be part of the subject of a human being. They can still be composite as a, some, as a thing, even if they are inseparable. So your argument there has been uh, essentially how that... disregarded. Because the idea is that just because you have something that's inseparable doesn't mean that they're no longer parts. You can still have parts even if they're inseparable. Body and soul composition still exists in heaven and you cannot separate the body and the soul in heaven as I've explained. Now, on the part of a person asking here about body atheism, in the, heavens. the idea, yeah, thank you. So the idea is that Aquinas addresses real relations in God. This is the answer to the question. Aquinas posits that the persons are to be defined as real relations in God, and thus simplicity is still affirmed. So you can still have real distinctions amongst the persons, and yet you still have the distinctions uh, in Time's up. the essence. Look, here's the, here's the difference between me and him. I've been very honest about my theology. He's trying to cover it up. Because the truth about his theology is this. <coughs> his theology, divine simplicity, go and Google it and research it in your own self. They do not believe in actual ontological distinctions between the attributes of God. Which means they believe in a God that doesn't have power, that doesn't have knowledge, that doesn't have will, they don't have it's, real it's will. Beyond, and I beyond, find it surprising beyond. that he was talking to me about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit having the same will. When isn't will something that can be susceptible to composition? Is it something that he mentioned power? He said something, oh, it's the potential to actualize. Isn't that something that could be on his idea, uh, divine simplicity, that be susceptible to composition on his idea? So he realizes that if he goes down that route, he becomes really an atheist for all the intents of both, or a deist. He's a deist. Because really he doesn't believe in a God with attributes. Or a classical theist. That's what he becomes. And so how can a classical theist believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Three different things. I mean, isn't this the most flagrant composition in the world. You've got three and one and one and three, and you're saying you don't believe in composition. Yeah. You're talking to us about uh, will and power. It's ridiculous, isn't right, it? Right, time's over. So, what you were just doing is essentially complaining about the view that I actually espoused. However, that wasn't the view that I espoused okay. at all. In relation to power and will, in terms of their formal definition, they can be applied to God, but as Aquinas says, they would have a relation to God eminently and simply. So, on the part of God, God would simply be pure existence itself, that has no issue as to whether we could say, could God, qua being, do these things or have these certain divine perfections? That has nothing to do with composition there because we're not affirming such as distinct on the part of God. However, on your part, you were clear about your compositionism and your argument that God was not finite did not substantiate enough to conclude such. When you argued that God has parts metaphysically, that would mean that your God is metaphysically finite because of his composition of such. So could you answer why you believe that your God is metaphysically finite? He uh, lied by saying that I believe that God has parts. 
I mean, either he's not been listening or he's lying. Either are things we've observed from this behavior of this individual before. The point I'm saying to you is this. How can you be complaining, to use your term, about composition and you believe in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit? How can you be talking to us about divine simplicity and you've complicated, mm. right, in numeric form, the numbers of the persons of God? The only way out of this is to say, this is not a, a, an ontological distinction, this is just a numeric distinction, but all three are really one in every sense, in which case, you're not a tri you don't believe in the Trinity. Sorry to say, there is no Trinity. You might as well just say what we say is that right. only one God. Exactly. But if you believe in divine simplicity, and once again, please research it. Divine simplicity, they do not believe a distinction between actual power, actual knowledge, actual will. The moment you start saying God can do, excuse me, God can do this, God can do that. How can it be the case when God is not meant to have any other Muhammad, thing ontologically me. separate or different or Muhammad, distinguished from the me. essence? Go ahead. Okay, so my timer cut out, right? I didn't set the timer before. So you're going to have to... Where, where you guys going? Huh? Going to the event. So, just to clarify, okay? Right? It's very verbose and I can, I can do a similar thing. I'll see how I do. Now, everyone that is watching this video, please go and research divine simplicity and the various articulations of divine simplicity. As this man has admitted, he admitted that in a very strong sense, he said yes, in a sense, they are going to be something about the subject Allah that is not the whole of the subject Allah. By this notion then and this definition, it would yes, be, yes, hold on, sorry, it would sorry. be that the subject Allah is going to be composite. Now, he tries to attack the notion of the Trinity and say that I should be a classical theist. Well, as he should know, most Christian missiologists, most Christians in the patristic tradition were classical theists. They were, as Augustine explains, as the Cappadocians were as well. Now, on your part, since you believe that these attributes in pertaining to the subject Allah are that which is not the whole, you therefore believe fragrantly that there is some sort of metaphysical Time's composition. Up. To answer the question. Time's up. Is it? Maybe. So here, here we have it again. Now He's... my time was up actually. So. Okay. Yeah, go on. Okay, so he's re reiterating the point. He believes that ha a, a being with multiple attributes is compositional in the same way that I have Jenga and I disassemble it. That it, it, it alludes to that the contingency of something in that, that same way. I'm saying prove that. If that's your claim, please prove. Please prove that. I want to see the proof for that. Number two, if you're, my, my postulation is as follows. I'm saying that classical theism is incompatible with the Trinity. It's incompatible with the idea of a loving God. Yes. God doesn't love. Don't say God loves. As a Christian, you, you, you pride yourself on the fact that God loves. On divine simplicity, God doesn't love because love doesn't exist in God. Love is not even there. This guy who was talking to me before talked about how God has relationships with love. Could you admit now, God, your God is not a loving God in any real sense. Your God is not a merciful God in, in any real sense. sense yeah. Your God is not a willing God in any real sense. Your God is not a powerful God in any real God. Your God right, is not even is a up. God so, in any real sense. When it comes to this idea now, <laughs> we will answer these uh, questions and that's completely fine. So, when it comes to the attributes as applied to God, given their formal definition, they will simply, as I've said again, relate to God in an eminent way. If love, and you must provide a definition, if love means to will the good for someone else, then God simply needs to will the divine essence for all things that pertain to existence and thus he has classified as really loving in a real sense. Again, your terms and notions are vague and the reason that they are vague is because you're... I'm so sorry. And the reason that they are vague is because on the part on the divine simplest and the classical theist, they've already said that these formal constitutive definitions can be applied to God in exactly their relation to creatures. God can still be really loving and really merciful as simply the justice of God as applied to creatures. Gregory the theologian says the exact same By thing. An, 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 By analogy, analogy, right. So in a real sense, God can be loving, I'll give you God five more can seconds. be merciful, and so on and so forth. Okay, on. he said that God, God's love is his willing to do good for something or another essence, or another being. That's another not being. what I said. He's, he's willing to be good. He said something like that, right? Say now, something like that? Yes. That's now, what I said. the point is, is if God's attribute of love is contingent on his attribute of willing, 
no problem, no problem. That's the view of the Ash'aris, that's no problem. But the issue is this, you've now affirmed, you've now affirmed what? The will of God. Is that not composite? Look at this, can you imagine this guy? He's talking about the will of God, will, will this and that. How can God have will, which is separate from his existence and his absolute existence, and that not be composition? So you want to have your cake and eat your bowl. Exactly. So you want, it's, it's, it's composition when we're talking about the power and the knowledge. But when he starts talking about the will, it's not composition. It's definitely composition the same way. Why not? How would you how would you define God's will if it's not something which is uh, attributed as an ontological status of God? It's something which is separate to this as a subject to the total of God. Is the God is the will of God? Is it uh, separate to the, the total subject or not? As yeah. his definition. Of course you can't. The thing is, if you believe in the divine simplicity, you believe in a God with zero attributes. Right, time zero time. actual attributes. So, is that not the case? The only thing so, God's essence or not attributes. Now, let me, let me explain right. very ex <coughs> explicitly, right? <coughs> so, like I was saying before, okay? And as I've been saying this entire time, you tried to give an erroneous notion of will. And you said that actually love is going to be contingent on the will. Now again, according to the scholastic tradition, will is just going to be the natural appetite towards the final cause. That is literally just going to be God qua being. Now all we're doing is saying, in applying these formal definitions to God, this would be the case. What we're not saying is that God is a conglomerate of ontological items that exist in him, which is what you have said. You said that these things have their own ontologies and that they are on the part of the subject of Allah, multiple entitative things. Now again, ontologies and entities are going to be treated as the same. I'm not ascribing mind or being to any of them. No, I am ascribing being to them because they, these things exist. You believe times up. in a conglomerate of existent entities. That times is up. the issue. Time's up, time's up. That is polytheistic. Time's, time's up, time's up. Okay. composition is. All right, all right, sure. Come on. Okay. Uh, he said that uh, when he's when he talking about will, the definition of will is appetites towards final causes. That's what he said. Appetites towards final causes, which is akin to a kind of emanationism. It's like, for example, God doesn't actually have a choice in the matter. It's like the sun and the rays of the sun. It just happens, which means that when you say that God loves you, he's not choosing to love you. He just happens to love you, just as that sun happens to uh, uh, express its rays on me right now. God is like your sun. That sun over there is your God, effectively. He has no will. He has no choice. He has no power. He has no knowledge. That's your God. And I believe you, believe me, this man here, he doesn't believe in that. The Christians don't believe in that nonsense because the, the Christians believe in a loving God. So you could try and push this onto the Christian belief. It's not even the Christian belief. They're trying to have their cake and eat it both. If you want to believe in a, a divine simplicity, you can't have divine simplicity, Trinity and multiple attributes, a loving God, a willing God all at the same time. You can't have it all. You can just say that I believe in a God akin to the sun, expressing his will like the will uh, uh, like the sun expresses its rays, it sounds right, up. Cool. So I have a minute as well, right? So don't mean to interrupt. What, what time Let's do you go, want to... uh, brother. We have to go because uh, I have to I just want to make one final remark. I have to go, brother. Yeah. Oh, after discrediting him, one, you want to go. One brother, now again, this is one remark. I have to go, brother. Your God is going to be go. similar like yeah. the sun. Yeah. In that it is composite. Yeah. It's okay. Your God is similar like the sun. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This is my. Why is it composite? 